Daniel-san, it's okay to lose to opponent, but never lose to fear. Also, only lose to me. Ta! Hi, thanks for tuning in to The Broken Meatball. My name's Luke and I make no apologies for bad impressions. This one's a nice quick video because, well, there's only so much I can say about this expansion to a great game. And today it is Onitama Sensei's Path. Now, as you can see, yeah, very small box. So, like, literally my head is bigger than this box. And it is literally just an expansion of cards for Onitama. Onitama being this fantastic two-player abstract strategy game. One that I even put into my top 10 of my top 100 last year. Will it be there this year? You'll have to find out in a couple of months. Woo! Yes, it's coming. But Onitama is a fantastic game. This one is just so simple to teach, so simple to play. It gives me that, that, that feeling of playing chess when I was a teenager. You know, it scratches that itch. And oh, I can't say enough good things. It's just such an awesome game. And if you get a chance to try it, I hardly, rec I hardly, hardly, highly recommend that you do. But what does this add? Well, it adds a bunch of cards to this expansion to add to what was already in place. Sounds simple enough. Is it worth getting though? And was it worth having a box like this? Sensei's Path adds 16 more cards to add to the 16 that you already had from the base game. A word of warning though before we get on with this review, the Turtle and the Phoenix cards are promos that were in Kickstarters from various other reviewers and podcasters. So these two cards will feature in this set, but know that they are exact duplicates of ones that you may have already got from Kickstarter promos. But even if you don't have that, you have 14 brand new cards each one adding a different type of movement to your pawns that you use during the game. Now, they usually come in pairs of twos, so you'll have the rat and the mouse, for example, where you can see that the moves that you can do on them are essentially inverted from each other, but of course, that means that you can have them in multiple games, and believe me, it may not look like much, but just inverting how it works makes such a big deal. And from there, you'll move on to other cards, such as the Tanuki and Sable, the Otter and the Iguana. You can see that that one is particularly all over the shop when it comes to how it likes to move. You can have the Dog and the Fox, you know, pretty straightforward. Uh, but, you know, moving to the side is always quite handy in this game. The Bear and one of my favourite animals in the world, the Panda. You know, these ones, again, you can move forward a little bit, but just be able to sidestep back. The Sea Snake and the Viper allow you to really sort of jump around all over the shop. I mean, do you want to go backwards, do you want to go forwards, or do you want to jump miles to the side? But then you really get into odd territories when you have the Kirin. I'm not entirely sure what a Kirin is, and a Giraffe. These ones are really different because it's not often that you can jump you know, two spaces away from your starting position, let alone two spaces in front of you. This allows you to take one giant leap across the mat, and, well, your opponent's going to know this, and so maybe they're going to be less wanting to use this card until they can blow a massive move on you. And, of course, like I said, the two promos that I mentioned earlier, the Turtle and the Phoenix. Again, these have some very interesting move layouts. And that's essentially what you get in this game. You get the 16 different cards, which means that including the two promos, effectively, you have 32 cards to use for Onitama. And that's essentially it. There's not a lot much more to say. So let's see what my final thoughts are. Okay, first off, the thing that you're already probably asking is, is there a point to having this little box? No, pretty much no. The, the cards in here will fit in the original Onitama without a problem. You know, there's a, you probably can't see, but there is a slot 
next to where the pawns are to where the cards normally go. If you don't sleeve your cards, they will fit in there with ease. If you sleeve them like I do, then you may find it's a little bit of a tight squeeze, but they will fit in there. You're just going to have to be a little bit more careful about how you roll up that mat when you're done playing, but they do fit. Uh, that's more with premium sleeves as well. I mean, if you've used small, you know, thinner sleeves, then you won't have such a problem. But to be honest, I only use Mayday sleeves at the moment, and the only ones I think you can get for the size, which, uh, by the way, is 70 by 120 millimeters, if you need to know, they can only get them in premium. So they're going to be quite thick sleeves, but hey, I want my cards protected because they do get handled quite a lot. Now you now have 32 cards, so in my case, I already had the two promos, so all I was adding was another 14 cards, but oh well, big deal, 14 instead of 16. But now I've got 32 cards, 32 cards to use in this game, and you only use five in any game. Now yes, you might say, well, you know, two of them are pretty much just inverted of one another, but it makes a difference because you're not likely to get your exact pairing in the same game. So you'll have the left-hand side version of one paired with the right-hand side version of a completely different animal. And they're all really varied. I mean, these ones are a lot more varied than the ones in the base game, I will say that. The ones in the base game are fine, you know, they, there's no problem with them, but there's only so much that some of these would do. I mean, they, they were very like closely knit. Not a lot of them would jump around the locations, that kind of thing. Whereas these seem to add just that little bit more mobility to your game in general. I mean, some of these, like that Kirin, for example, that's insane. I mean, being able to literally just jump two spots in front of you to the side can really sneak up on, you know, you can sneak up on your opponent's pawn or master or even his chair with pretty good tactical skill using that card. But of course, your opponent's going to know this, so is he going to let you have it? That's the beauty of Onitama, that whole, I want to use this card, but do I want to let him use that card later? It's, that's why I love this one so much. The box is completely pointless. I mean, the game's not exactly that expensive. I think it's like 10, 11, 12 quid or something you can get this for. But yeah, you pretty much could have just charged a fiver and given it to us in a plastic bag, really, because, well, I mean, yeah, it's nice. You know, you, you open it up and it's got that you know, same little foldy layout as the normal Onitama box. But yeah, was it really necessary? It looks nice. It makes it a little bit more portable for the guys, but you know, you're not gonna fit the base game in here. So what was the point of making it all flashy? I don't know. I suppose it depends if they bring out more cards for this, which they could easily do. Although to be honest, I don't see what's the point. You, know, you can keep this box if you like, just in case they do, but I'm sure they'll release it in another box like this if they did. But personally, 32 cards, and you only use five per round. If they didn't release any more cards for this game, I would be pretty well sorted. There's more than enough variety in here to make Onitama, well, to make your time, Onitama continue to be as brilliant as it was. As if the variety wasn't good enough with 16, now I have twice as many cards. And there's not much more to say about it, really. I mean, it's the same style. It's the same, you know, graphic design look. Um, it's cool that they are named after actual styles of martial art. And they've got the quotes underneath, like, uh, let's see, let's take a new one. The, the sea snake. There is no movement or opportunity wasted. Strike where you are not expected. Flow where your opponent believes you cannot be. I love these. I mean, granted, you know, it's an abstract game. You don't have to care too much about the theme. Objection! Get a kick out of reading the flavor text on these. I, I'm a bit of a martial arts fan, in a sense. I mean, I, I barely learned it in my life. I'm like a yellow belt in jiu-jitsu. I'm not exactly a martial artist. It's difficult to decide what to give this, though, as a rating because at the end of the day, it's a cheap expansion with 16 more cards. It just makes a great game even better. So I suppose that deserves a high rating in a sense, because some of the best expansions are ones that literally just add more of the same, you know, more of the good stuff. I can't really fault it. It's, you know, it's not the most expensive expansion in the world. I have seen less in an expansion for more money, you know, talking to you, AEG, and it's decent. I... It's 16 more cards. What more is there to say? 16 more cards to what was already a great game, introducing a lot of variation, a lot of mobility. I can't really say anything bad about it. Maybe just why did they bother putting it in a box and selling it for less money? I don't know. To be fair, I 
can't remember the last time I saw any publisher actually bother to release an expansion in just a little bit of cling film wrapping. You know, Steve Jackson, I think, did it once with a Revolution expansion. I think Bezier uh, released the expansion to Suburbia, Suburbia Inc. in a kind of like cling film board. So I suppose that's an exception. But yeah, most of the time publishers want to print you out a nice little box and at least they didn't charge £20 for it. You know, I'm happy to pay £10, £10 to £12 or so to get twice the variation that the other one had. In fact, more than twice the variation if you want to get all mathy about it. It's an awesome expansion. I can't really say much more. I don't want new mechanics. I just want more cards. More cards is good. Don't need the box. I can just keep normal Onitama and I can't wait to get it back to the table again. So I'm giving Onitama Sensei's Path a well-deserved 10 out of 10. I can't fault it. It's more cards. It's more of the good stuff. It's not too expensive. You know, it could have been more. Trust me, it could have been more. And like I say, nothing else to fault. Very little to say. 10 out of 10 for a game that I've already rated a 10 out of 10. Onitama is just that good of a two-player gateway level strategy game and is definitely worth your time to pick up. If you own Onitama, then that expansion is a must buy. So I'm going to leave you with that. Get out there, buy this expansion and enjoy more great times with a awesome strategy game, Onitama. So that's it. But remember, while you're dueling there with your other half, it's only a game.